All right, what up, y'all? It's your boy, Martin, a.k.a. The Boxing Purist. Welcome once again to the Truth and Absolute channel, where I speak the truth and nothing but the truth. So help me, good God almighty. All right, y'all. Y'all ready for another episode? This is your first time checking out the channel. Welcome to my channel. This is Complete Boxing Channel. We keep it non-biased. We just keep it real no matter what fight or which fighter we're talking about. We just keep it 100. Leave the feelings at the door. If you want to talk boxing, go down to the comment section, drop a comment down there, or just reply to somebody else down there. We love talking boxing around here. It's what we do. Now let's get right into this one. So it is being reported that uh, Javante Tank Davis, who was scheduled to fight Lamont Roach on December 14th in Houston, Texas at the Toyota Center, is having problems with the venue okay so i guess the, the fighters are perfectly fine i guess everything is going good the deal is fine but i guess they're having problems with the venue now this is what was being reported but now there's other reports coming out and nothing is 100 percent confirmed let me just start off by saying that but now other reports are coming out now that the fight between uh tank davis and lamont roach is going to be added to the card of david benavidez fighting david morrell i believe that is set to take place in january or february if i'm not mistaken so what happened here what happened here okay venue problems for a tank davis fight I don't think so, okay? I'm, I'm going to go off on this one and say I don't believe it. I, I, I'm not buying this one, okay? Me, personally, what I think is going on, and you know me, I'm just going to keep it real. I'm going to tell you how I feel. I think that they received such backlash for the opponent that they chose for Gravante Tank Davis, and that is why they had to just pretty much say that they didn't have a venue, but they had to do something. PBC knew that they had to do something, and guess what? This is a good sign for boxing, and let me explain why. This is a good thing for boxing, because Tank Davis, ever since Tank Davis jumped on the professional scene, it seemed like, was always sold as a champion, was always sold as, as the takeover, like the next best thing, you know what I'm saying? Kind of like they're doing the other guy, what's his name, Kermel Morton? You guys know who I'm talking about. I'm horrible with names at times. But with Tank, they got away with that for a very long time. I mean, if you look at Tank's career and you look at his level of opposition, like, let's not forget, Tank Davis has been around for quite a while. He fought on the undercard of Floyd Mayweather versus Conor McGregor back in 2017, I think it was. And ask yourself, how many real good, good fights has Tank Davis had since that? You could go up and down his resume and see that his resume doesn't really show anything. However, with those opponents in line, they were able to sell Tank Davis fairly good for a very long time. For a very long time. But now it seems like even his backers, his fans, his most loyal people, even the boxing analysts that always blew him up, that everybody is finally pushing and saying, OK, Tank, you're 29 years old. OK, you're 29 years old and you still really don't have what is called a good track, a good run on your resume. You know what I mean? There's no fight on there that's a career defining fight that you say, OK, Tank Davis took this risk against this fighter and came out victorious on top. He just does not have that fight on his resume. OK, he does not. Even the Ryan Garcia fight, and I've said this a million times, when you talk about the Ryan Garcia fight, it's like, okay, you beat Ryan, right? But you also weight drained Ryan down to 136, okay? You also put a rehydration clause on Ryan where he couldn't gain back more than seven pounds after the weigh-in, Ryan going in there looking like Jack Skeleton, OK, and I think that there was finally a backlash from fans. And that is a good thing for the sport of boxing, because one, we, we can't be seeing Tank fight these dudes forever. You know what I'm saying? That's what it was looking like, you know, him fighting like Lamont Roach. Lamont Roach, I'm not taking nothing away from Lamont Roach. OK, he's a solid boxer, all that kind of stuff. But when there's a guy coming up from another weight class that from that lower weight class only has about 10 knockouts on his resume. Now he's moving up in weight to fight a fighter like Tank. One, he's not going to have the power to keep Tank off of him. Two, it's just going to be the same, same Tank fight that we always see, right? A dude dancing around the ring a little bit until he finally gets caught by one of Tank's bombs. And this is a good thing because now it's going to have to push Tank to pick bigger fights in the future because this is the second time that he's going to team up with David Benavidez if the sports, if the, uh, the reports are true. And it's not because no venue, I could promise you that. It's because they would not be able to sell the fight. And I could guarantee you that's exactly what it was because you put 
with Tank versus Lamont in the Toyota Center in Houston. One, Tank Davis' excuse for choosing Lamont was because Lamont is from the East Coast, so is Tank, so it'd be a big seller. There's only one issue with that claim. You guys are both from the East Coast, but you're fighting in Houston, Texas, so what good is that going to do you? Sorry, that excuse does not work, okay? It just does not work. So what do you do? You got to team them up with Team Benavidez, and that's what we thought they were going to do. I said that in a video in the past when I was first talking about the tank potential Tank Davis fight, and that's what it looks like it's going to happen. Now you throw him on the card with Benavidez and Morel. Now it's a halfway decent card that, you know, that, that's, I mean, yeah, you could... It's you could sell it as a pay per view, but I like to say, man, events like these that are that are borderline pay per view. If you put these on national television, you create a huge, huge event for boxing. Is what you do. But when you try to sell every little fight to every single person, that's when boxing starts tanking down, unfortunately. But so again, man, this is just what's reported. Nothing is set in stone. I don't think that they're going to go through with the December 14th card just for the reasons that I named already. Um, I don't think it's a venue issue. I just think it's a level of opposition for Tank. It's time for Tank to step it up, man. He's 29 years old. He's coming to the end of a potential career because he's getting close to 30 already. And we've seen fighters fight a very long time, but Tank has not been the most active fighter throughout his whole career, you know? And my, my question is, like, at age 30, is that when Tank starts taking the big, big fights? You know, is that when he decides to move up in weight? Is that when he decides to, be, you know, he has not dared to be great yet. Let's keep it real, Tank fans. Tank has not dared to be great yet. We are giving Tank credit off of what he could potentially do because of his boxing skills inside that ring, okay? And we do that with a lot of fighters, but this is a good thing for the sport of boxing. I'm going to keep you guys posted on this, see what goes on with this, but more than likely, we'll probably have a doubleheader with Tang Davis and uh, David Benavidez leading the way. Uh, the early next year is what it's looking like. So let me know what y'all think, man. Drop a comment down below. You like this idea of a card? And do y'all think it's tank to, time for Tank to start stepping it up? Let me know in the comment section, y'all. Much love to you guys. God bless y'all. I'll speak to y'all soon. Peace.